So thank you very much for the invitation. It's a very nice and uh, very peaceful place. I like it. Okay. So <clears throat> okay. So I'll <clears throat> talk about differentiable orbitals. So usually uh, we think of them as generalizations of manifolds, uh, but you can also think of them uh, as a generalization of a group action. <clears throat> okay, now before I give a definition, um, I just want to give you some intuitive idea. So. There are some <coughs> orbifolds called global quotient orbifolds. And these are the ones that are <coughs> easiest to you know, understand. So this is uh, <coughs> quotient of a manifold. by action, by smooth action of <coughs> a finite group. Okay. Uh, so I'll give you one kind of very stupid example, a stupid looking example that is you can even consider uh, point mod some group action. So, example would be say point mod g. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so here as a topological space, the quotient is just a point. So, this example is to emphasize that when I talk about later about orbifolds and I try to define it. It's not just the quotient space that is important, it's also the group's actions that is important. Now, these are global quotients. Now, generally, more generally, uh, <coughs> orbifold, roughly speaking, is locally Manifold or <coughs> modular smooth action of finite. Now, so then I can. <coughs> uh, so notice that this group action need not be effective. Okay, and that actually will make our definition a uh, little bit complicated. Okay, so in the actual definition that I'll give, I'll have uh, a topological space. I'll have a cover for that, and on each of these covers, I will have something called a local chart, or and that will consist of. Uh, a manifold and finite group action and the quotient being that open set that I started with. Now because this, uh, then there will be some gluing data like how do I patch this up and finally uh, because the actions will not be effective uh, I, I need some more conditions. Okay, so let me write down the definition first. Now, if the action is effective, that is, okay, if locally this uh, finite group action is effective, 
then there is a simplification. You can get a much simpler uh, uh, you know, description of the orbifold. And if the <coughs> action is not locally effective, then we need some machinery called groupoid, some categorical gadget. And in that, so let me go slowly first, let me uh, define nor before, okay? So this is definition. Okay. So <clears throat> take X to be Hausdorff paracompact. So you want to do partition of unity, so you want paracompact topological space. So an orbifold atlas on X is given by an open cover script 2 of X such that, okay, so <clears throat> each open set U in the cover has an orbifold chart U tilde G phi, where U tilde is a smooth manifold, uh, G is a finite group. So when I write G, I just don't mean the group, I also mean the action as part of the data. So G is a finite group acting smoothly on U tilde <coughs> and phi is roughly the quotient map. So phi is a map from U tilde to X, okay? Uh, is a G equivariant map. So basically it's a G invariant map because X does not have any action. Inducing a homeomorphism Uh, between uh, U tilde mod G and U. Right, so uh, locally you have a manifold and the quotient is homeomorphic to your open set. Okay, so an X is covered by such open sets. Uh, now I have to make some, so I, I have to first of all say how these are going to be patched up. Uh, there is one condition, uh, um, so in parenthesis I'll make a definition, let kernel G be the subgroup of G that acts trivially on, so X as the identity on U tilde.
Okay. So in my next, when I uh, describe this patching, this kernel G will be important. So next I uh, try to describe how these are to be glued. Okay. So what I will do is uh, roughly, okay, here is the strategy. So for a manifold, uh, you can uh, okay. So for a manifold, you can you, you have these transition maps, right? Now you can also do it differently. I mean, you can also, here is say U1, here is U2, and here is U1 intersection U2. And you can, you know, instead of giving the transition map, you can give a pair of embeddings, right? So this, uh, this kind of strategy I can follow for the orbifolds. <coughs> So, if u prime, so this is in x, open set in x is in u, is, this is an inclusion map, then there exists an <coughs> embedding. or this is also embeddings of charts are also called injections of <clears throat> so what is this this is you have two charts corresponding to u prime and u tilde prime and here you have what is u tilde g phi and then here you'll have two maps one going from the space u tilde prime to u tilde okay so let's call that i tilde and then you have a homomorphism of the two groups and that i call i sharp Okay, and what do you want? You want I tilde from U prime tilde to U tilde to be a smooth embedding of manifolds. I sharp <coughs> from G prime to G. First of all, you want this to be an injective homomorphism. Uh, such that which restricts to an isomorphism uh, from kernel G prime to kernel G. Okay. So if you think about uh, the subgroups that act trivially have to be isomorphic for this to be. If you think about the point mod G, then there is only one injection possible, right? And that would be an isomorphism of uh, G, automorphism of G. 
Okay. And uh, there should be some compatibility between this I tilde uh, and I sharp. So naturally, you would want, where is it? Oh, oh there. Okay. okay. Isomorphism means that if the action is somewhere non-effective, then everywhere non-effective. Yeah, I mean, no, that that is not so. Uh, but you can. It's like this. You can. You can describe, so what this will do is basically at the same point you are trying to say, uh, describe the same neighborhood of X by two charts. And if one uh, chart has non-effective action, then the other chart would have the same amount of non-effective action. <coughs> Okay, so I want uh, I tilde to be I sharp equivariant, so that, right? And finally, uh, I want uh, I of V prime, so when you go down to X, this thing should commute, should be V of I tilde. So these are some natural requirements that I have. Okay, so this is, uh, so such injections should exist, right? That's my condition to say is whenever I have a subset of an open set corresponding uh, injections, I mean the corresponding charts should have some injection like this, right? And number three condition is that for any point P in U1 intersection U2, uh, there exist U3 in U such that <coughs> P is contained in U3, and U3 is a subset of U1 intersection U2. Right? So, uh, condition 2 and 3 together would imply that uh, if I have two orbifold charts coming from U1 and U2, there will be a third chart coming from U3, and there will be injections going from U3 to U1 and U3 to U2. Okay. So, <coughs> I have a definition. Uh, <coughs> if kernel G is trivial for each chart, Then the orbifold is uh, called effective or reduced. Okay. Oh, oh, 
Okay, I jumped the gun a little bit. Uh, so first, uh, this is one orbifold atlas. Okay. Uh, anyways, but I, I didn't define actually. Uh, there should be a notion of a maximal atlas or something like that. So let me first first do that. Okay. So what is an orbifold uh, structure? So first I have a definition of an atlas. Then I can refine an atlas. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> Say so you this collection uh, so an atlas u prime g prime v prime is said to refine u refine an atlas. Um, UG phi if uh, oh I should put tilde here right if every uh, if given any <clears throat> you tilde g phi there exist u tilde prime g prime v prime that injects into into it, right? Uh, why, why, do we define, why do we have to be defined to define effective over uh, Okay, these are simpler. I'll, I'll show you a theorem about these things uh, after five minutes. Uh, I don't understand. Oh, <coughs> okay. So first, I I will define orbifold. Then I because I define orbifold at plus. But uh, you see, the same orbifold can be described by different at plus right so if you have point mod g you can take or you can take several points modulo a bigger group so that's why i need to define something like an equivalence of atlas and maybe his question is oh when you have a group action, uh -huh. you can always push it by this uh, corner and okay. make it effective. Yeah, that is true. Uh, sure. But what we'll see is that naturally uh, there will arise some orbifolds that are not effective. We don't want to throw away the non effective ones uh, because they also have some information. So. <clears throat> okay, uh, two atlases are equivalent if 
they have a common refinement An orbifold structure, so here is the final the definition, orbifold structure on X is the equivalence class <coughs> of, is an equivalence class of orbifold atlases on X. Okay. All right. Um, So I define something called local isotropic group. Okay. So suppose okay. Uh, all right. Uh, let me say here that denote. Uh, corresponding orbifold by script x or chi, whatever. Okay. So that would be x with underlying topological space and orbifold structure. So suppose uh, you have an orbifold and <clears throat> p is a point in x and u tilde. G phi local chart uh, around P and you take some point P tilde in phi inverse of P which is in u tilde. Okay. Suppose GP is a stabilizer of P tilde in G. So the subgroup that fixes P tilde. Now this GP is um, independent of choice of p tilde up to conjugation. Okay. So g p is independent of p tilde up to conjugation and we just say that g p is the or maybe it's conjugacy class is the it's called the local isotropy group at P. Okay. Now, when I uh, define, I mean, when I defined our reports, I have this U tildes to be any smooth manifold. Now, of course, I can choose some small open sets and small u tildes. In fact, I can choose the u tilde to
to be some open ball in Rn, okay? And that's what I'm going to use. Uh, so, <clears throat> here is a theorem which will say that these effective orbifolds are pretty nice. Okay. Theorem. An effective orbifold admits a description as quotient of uh, a smooth manifold by the action of a compact Lie group. So, and I give you a, as an outline of the proof. Okay. So, this description is crucial for, you know, giving you intuition. That is, several theories on orbifolds could be thought of as some kind of equivariant theory in terms of such a description. Sorry? Any smooth, Any smooth uh, manifold, with ma manifold with compactly group action. Yes, okay. No, you need uh, the stabilizers to be finite, first of all. So uh, there's a term called a foliation. Sorry, not a foliation, yeah. Anyways, there's some term. So, but you need, uh, if, you, if a compactly group is acting with finite stabilizers and Roughly, uh, uh, there, there is a, yeah. Okay, it's, if it's a, something called a foliated action, um, then it's an orbifold. Some natural restriction. So, uh, <clears throat> some slice uh, kind of, uh, some condition on, Slices, something like that. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. I remember there's some mild condition. Okay. Uh, you can find this uh, this uh, answer in the book by Mardike and Marcun. It's called uh, Foliations and Lee Groupoids. So there they you can find the answer to your question <clears throat> okay um, so for every local chart uh, Assume. So you can take a large enough a class so that you have UP tilde is some open ball, say. In, well, it doesn't have to be a ball, but I can make it into a ball. Uh, the idea being that you take any open set which is uh, GP stable, then because GP is, you start with any metric on UP tilde, and then you can average out that metric because GP is a finite group. So, GP action can be assumed to be uh, orthogonal. 
g p x as <coughs> subgroup of O n. by averaging metric on u tilde. Okay. Now consider the frame bundle. Okay. Consider so you can also assume that uh, T U P tilde, okay, of course, uh, this is open set of R n, so T U P tilde is the tangent bundle is trivial. This G P is not equal to that G P. Okay, so it, 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 you, can, you can choose it small enough. I, didn't, I don't uh, need that to be true, but you can have it to be like that. So this is a stabilizer. But for every point, you can choose. In, it's, it, instead of the big U tilde, okay, you okay. can choose a small neighborhood of P tilde, and that would be a chart. So you can use that GP over there. But I, I don't really need that. But anyways, you can use that GP. <coughs> okay, consider the bundle uh, this is going to be a trivial bundle of f for frame u p tilde of <coughs> orthonormal frames Which is, remember, this is isom going to be isomorphic to UP tilde across Rn. Okay. Now, So what are the frames? You have a basis of uh, O n. Sorry, yeah. You have a basis, orthonormal basis of. Okay. Whatever. All right. Now. Okay. So what does F U P tilde look like? This is U P tilde. So, cross O n, right? Because any frame can be translated to another frame, right? Now, define F U P to be <coughs> this quotient. quotient by GP, right? So GP acts on UP, there is induced action on tangent bundles, so on frames. Okay. Uh, all right. So this is, actually this looks like U P tilde cross fiber product O N over G P. Right? So oh, when I mean what I mean by this action is the standard uh, diagonal action. 
Now notice that uh, GP action on ON is free. Okay? Although GP action in UP tilde is not free, right? but on this one it is free. So overall this is a free action. Okay? So free action implies that F U P is a manifold on the other hand if you take F U P over O N also is homeomorphic to up tilde mod gp which is just homeomorphic to up okay now there is a gluing that we are not going to describe one can check uh, so let us define F to be the union <coughs> of all this F U P okay this is a manifold well let's call it M okay M is a manifold and M mod O N is homeomorphy to X. <coughs> okay. Now <clears throat> as I said that this description is going to be quite useful. Uh, now for a general orbifold I cannot do this. You see the first point was that this GP becomes a subgroup of ON and that there you need effectiveness. Right? Because yeah, if it acts trivial you cannot uh, put it inside some diffeomorphism group, right? Yeah. Ineffectively, you cannot. So, uh, this, now what happens for a general orbifold, right? So, I would need some generalization uh, called. So, if you think about this, you can describe X as, you see, uh, the quotient of some <laughs> equivalence relation on a manifold okay for a general orbifold I can do the same I can describe it as the quotient of a of an equivalence relation on a manifold okay and but for that I need uh, this categorical notion of <coughs> of groupoid okay <clears throat> so uh, even a general orbifold can be expressed as quotient of a manifold by an equivalence relation. Uh, we need the notion of groupoid. My point is why am I doing this, uh, uh, introducing all this? Because I, what I found is that if you think 
often if you think in terms of groupoids, uh, many things become clearer and natural. <coughs> okay. So let me, should I define a groupoid? Oh. Huh? Slightly. Okay, everybody has seen. Okay. Well, let's see. So, <clears throat> groupoid. Okay, anyways, I need to set up some notation. Is a category G with objects. G naught and morphisms or arrows. Somewhat easier to write arrow than morphism. Uh, and morphisms. So G naught is the set of objects and G1 is the set of morphisms and structure maps. So I will draw <coughs> some diagrams. <coughs> so one of the conditions is that every morphism should be an isomorphism. That is, every morphism would be invertible. Okay. So S source map S from G1 to G0. So this is my picture. You have a morphism between two objects taking going from the object X to the object Y. So G is an element of G1. X, Y are in G0. And source of G is x, target of g is y, and target t again from g1 to g0. And then <coughs> there is a multiplication, there is composition or multiplication map m as follows. That is, two arrows can be, two morphisms can be composed. Okay? Now, here is x, y, g1, and you can only compose it with another arrow if that second arrow starts at y. Right? So, g2, it has to take y to z. So G1 and G2 can be composed only if M G2 exists. Oh. Defined if yeah, if source G2 is target G1. Okay? So I can write that in this fibered product notation as follows. So two arrows, G1 and G2, coming from the space of arrows, if uh, say target of the first equals source of the second, and this is going to give me a new arrow, G1, and here is my picture, okay? Uh, M of G1, G2, I can write this as G2 composed G1. Okay. So this is the critical difference between a group and a groupoid. In a group, group you can think of as object being a point and morphisms being elements of the group. And every two morphisms can be composed, but here not all morphisms can be composed. 
So this is a generalization of the idea of a group. Now there, are, of course, there is, you need an inverse. So inverse, okay, first an identity. So, yeah, that's my notation here. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, when you have a group, you have these points, elements in the group, and you have a morphism by multiplication by another. Okay, uh, so I will maybe do that example uh, after this. Okay, uh, identity. What it does is that there is an identity map which takes G naught into G one, such that. Uh, E of X is identity X. Uh, what do I mean? What I mean is that, so at, at every object, of course, has an identity morphism, right? An identity automorphism, okay? That's, that's the existence of that is necessary. That's the that's thing. So what I need is E x times g equal to g. <clears throat> OK, so here is composition notation that I'm using. So if whenever, which one comes first? First g, whenever target of g equal to x and g of e x h of e x equal to h whenever source of h is x okay so this e x just acts like identity okay and then you have inverse so pretty much all that you have for groups except this you have to be careful with composition and inverse each g uh, x to y has inverse g inverse y to x such that g of g inverse is identity of y and g inverse of g is identity of x. Okay. All right, so, yeah, so example one is just a group. Okay, this group part is basically a special type of category. Uh, so group G, you would have G naught equal to just point and G1 equal to G. And so as a picture, you just have a point and you have, sorry, you have various, you know, elements of point where? sorry point where? G is a point. G naught is just a point mm -hmm. this says a set okay. as a point so, the, so you may consider this as a, a group is acting trivially yeah group acting trivially on a point so this is basically group 
acting trivially on a point. So this way you can actually recover the structure of the group if you go through all these compositions. So when I say group-wide, it has all this data, right? The source, target, composition, inverse. So all that information is, uh, of the group is captured by this gadget, OK? So this is how I can look at a group as a group point. Now, as Professor uh, pointed out, you can also look at, I mean, in general, any group action as a group point. So, <clears throat> Example two, a group G acting on space or set M, right? Here I'll take uh, G naught to be M and G1 to be <coughs> M cross G. That is, you take this to be, for instance, M cross uh, oops, G. So you take your arrows. You see, you have, basically, it's the data, like where does each point go by action of each element. So this is X comma G such that source of G equal to X. All this. Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry. X comma G uh, such that uh, okay, such that X in okay. Uh, now, okay, X in M G in G and what I can do is what is source of xg, this is x and target of xg is g dot x, right? Okay, and this group wide, uh, this is called the action group wide, okay? This is called action group wide. Uh, <clears throat> okay, uh, it's written, okay, I have to see which direction it is written. It's written like G acting, <laughs> semi-direct product notation. Okay, okay. now before I uh, try to describe a general array fold as a group word, I just uh, put some structure on these groupoids. For example, what is a topological groupoid and what is a Lie groupoid or smooth groupoid. <coughs> so that's easy. Uh, topological groupoid, you want G naught, G1, topological spaces. So you want to put some topology on this. And all structure maps S, T, M, I, E are continuous. So you want the structure maps to be continuous in whatever topology you have put. Okay, and <clears throat> Lie group wide is similar, but there is one small condition. <clears throat> okay, and of course, again, you want G naught, G one to be smooth manifolds. Uh, you want all structure maps are smooth. 
and you want S to be a submersion. Source S uh, needs is a sub must be has to be submersion. Now this is required because uh, T you can write as S of inverse. Now I is a diffeomorphism because it has inverse. So this implies T is also submersion. Then domain of M uh, which is equal to G1 G1 over G0 source target this fiber product is smooth by the pre-image uh, theorem. Describe a general orbifold as a, a Lie groupoid. So R B fold and this uh, the fold uh, I mean details you can find in this paper by Mardike and Pronk called R B folds. Uh, shifts and groupoids. M O E R D I J K. Okay, so actually he also has a very this book I mentioned on foliations and Lie groupoids. Uh, there, the same Mardik. And that book uh, is very good for, <clears throat> uh, you know, has a very nice discussion on effective orbifolds. That frame bundle uh, proof that I took uh, was from that book. And he explains very, you know, I mean, a lot of details uh, of the theory of effective orbifolds very nicely. So that book, uh, uh, maybe I remember to give you that reference later. I'll give you the references later. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> let's see. So, X be an orbifold. <clears throat> so, I'll just write X orbifold with atlas so UP Okay. So maybe you can finish what you want to say. Okay. And let's let's do that. Okay. <coughs> UP tilde GP and phi P. Now G naught, the space of objects. So what would you do for a manifold? For a manifold, you would uh, just, you basically you take the disjoint union of your open sets as, so you try to do the same thing here. Uh, you take this disjoint union of this UP tildes and, okay. And what are the arrows? So, <clears throat> a morphism uh, 
uh, G in G1 G goes of course from here would be my notation I would take a point in G0 and also index it by the open set it's coming from okay U1 tilde to X2 U2 tilde is an equivalence class So the idea is somehow in, in manifolds what you would have to do is these arrows, uh, if you have two open sets, right, and you want to identify them on the intersection uh, smoothly, then an arrow must be the germ of a diffeomorphism. Okay. So that's what we are trying to write down an analog of that. Yeah, X1 is in Yeah, so you see any point comes from it's not just a point, it comes from some specific open set, right? So that is why so an element element is uh, basically this is X and a typical element is P as a Q U P right this is a typical element of G naught right so when you do that you specify an atlas yeah I specified an atlas and what do you mean by equivalence I, I'm going to f finish this so intuitively I said this should be like germs of diffeomorphisms so this is uh, a generalization of that. Okay, uh, is an equivalence class of triples G equal to lambda one W lambda two Okay, so I have to say what is equivalence, what is what, but first, uh, what, what are these objects, right? Uh, so let me draw a picture for you. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So here is the so U1 tilde, here is the point X1 inside it, and here is U2 tilde, and the point X2 inside it, and what I have is another chart, W, uh, inside some W and I have injections lambda 1 lambda 2 so where this W <coughs> in W uh, for another chart of W, H, and phi. And lambda 1, lambda 2 are injections. So, of course, every injection has two maps, right, at the level of space and groups, but I'm just uh, combining into a single notation. Uh, so this is 
W H phi to U I tilde G I phi I are embeddings such that uh, lambda i of w is x i. So that point uh, w will go to exactly those points. And let me say here, uh, so this is the three objects and what is equivalence. Uh, okay. Anyways, so for another injection gamma going from w prime h prime phi prime into w h phi uh, what we have is and W prime and W prime such that gamma W prime equal to W or uh, lambda 1 omega or W lambda 2. This is equivalent to lambda 1 of composed with gamma W prime lambda 2 composed with gamma. Okay, so here there could be like some smaller chart first going into this and then you compose and then those things are equivalent. Okay? And so let me write down what are the source. The tricky one is the composition. Uh, let me write down the source, target, etc. So source of lambda 1, w, lambda 2 is lambda 1, w, right? That is x1, comma, u1 tilde, target, now you can imagine, there will be lambda 2 and u2 tilde, Right. Oh, let me write that. I'm going to save a lot of time that way. Then identity of point x u tilde is identity u tilde x identity u tilde. So it's the identity uh, injection for the chart of u tilde. Everything, all the uh, injection, uh, that both maps for groups and injection. Uh, inverse is you just switch the directions. This is not directly source and target. This is just a, you said you are using directly, but it's not directly. Right? Sorry. Source and targets. They are the elements in there. Oh, okay. Parenthesis. Sorry. So, uh, of course, uh, so let's uh, uh, understand what is the composition, okay? Um, so, let me first, uh, without that, of course, this inverse, uh, well, it's intuitive, but let's do a composition uh, M of 
lambda 1, omega lambda 2, mu 1, z mu 2. So first let me draw the picture. So here is, you have one such thing, and then you want to compose it with another. Uh, so it's so mu 1, mu 2, uh, going to say u3 tilde and x3 inside there. And of course here you would have some, uh, so z, say capital Z, that is the chart. And what is the composition? Uh, for the composition, you got to find something a refinement, common refinement. And so that I will call say Y, capital Y. And uh, let's call this a uh, new one, a new two. And so the composition is uh, new one, a uh, lambda one composed new one. Z and this is new two compose mu two. So mu two compose mu two. Okay. Okay. So I'll just uh, put some notation and then we can have a, a small break if you want. Okay, uh, maybe I just introduce one notation and then we have a break. Okay, so here's notation. Um, this thing is called a coarse space. Uh, this is defined to be a G naught modulo an equivalence relation, and x is equivalent to y if there exists g in G1 such that source g is x. So if there is some arrow between x and y. Okay, and so in this uh, notation, uh, if you want uh, this action groupoid that I wrote, G acting on M, the coarse space of that is M G, right, and one. Maybe one tiny uh, definition that is no this oh. G one is G cross M. Thank you. Okay, and one small tiny definition <coughs> isotropic group so say x is in g naught okay I, then g x set of all G in all arrows 
such that both source and target are x. Gx is a group. Okay, so for any group point. Okay, so let me stop here.